What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitchy Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. If you've already subscribed, thanks a ton. If you haven't, what are you waiting for? Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Jose Barrios, who had four Ks in five and a third innings, but did give up 11 hits, including two home runs, for a total of five runs. Barrios had these nasty change-ups and this Expelliarmus two-seamer, but struggled a little bit on his curveball, only getting one whiff. He faced off against Corey Kluber, who had seven Ks in five and a third innings, giving up three runs. Kluber flashed a wicked breaking ball, painting with this backdoor curveball, and also had this dirty changeup. Mackenzie Gore had four Ks in four innings. He gave up four runs and ran up a ton of pitches in this game early, but his stuff looked pretty solid. He had these 97 mile an hour fastballs and these hammer curveballs. He battled Drew Smiley, who pitched great. He didn't get a lot of strikeouts this game, only getting two, but did let up only one run in seven innings and had these dirty curveballs for swords. Tony Gonsolin had three Ks in four and two-thirds innings, giving up three runs, and had this nasty splitter. Opposite him was Ty Walker, who had six Ks in three and a third innings, but gave up eight runs, all of them earned. It wasn't all bad for Ty. He did have this filthy splitter and his 95-mile-an-hour fastballs. Ross Stripling had five Ks in five innings, giving up two runs, and had this slider and changeup. He faced Luis Garcia, who got hurt after eight pitches in this game. I believe it's an elbow injury, which is never fun to hear. Yep, another member of the Astros rotation going down. Right now, it seems pretty likely that Brandon Belak will take his place, and he came in for Garcia in this game and did admirably with six Ks and four innings. Spencer Strider had eight Ks and five innings. He gave up four runs, which is very unstrider-like. The Mets put together some really good at-bats early in this game, running up Strider's pitch count, but he also did have his dominating mix of fastballs, sliders, and change-ups. He gave up a big home run to Pete Alonso on this slider, and here's an overlay of a Codify heat map with that slider. It shows you why Strider would attack Alonso with a slider. You see a ton of blue if he threw it where he wanted to. Unfortunately, he didn't. He missed his location. That slider was in the red, and Charlie Morton had six Ks in five and a third innings, giving up four runs. But I thought Morton looked really good. His curveballs were outstanding. I mean, look at these hammers. Morton can spin a curveball with the best of them. He also showed off his fastball, touching 97 here. And here's an overlay of Morton's 95-mile-an-hour fastball with an 83-mile-an-hour curveball. And you can see why Morton gets a ton of swings and misses on his curveball. That curveball ends up way out of the zone, despite looking like a fastball almost the entire way to the plate. You might remember early in his career, Morton was really a ground ball specialist. But he changed the way he threw after modeling himself after Roy Halladay. And to show the similarity, I put together this overlay to show Charlie Morton's mechanics against Roy Halladay's. You can definitely see the influence. Morton faced Tyler McGill, who had four Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up three runs, had this changeup. And here's an overlay of McGill's 95-mile-an-hour fastball with an 81-mile-an-hour slider. And you can see why that combo is effective for him. Cal Quantrill had two Ks in seven and third innings, giving up only two runs and had this curveball. And my filthiest starter from yesterday was Domingo Herman. Herman had six Ks in eight and a third innings, giving up only two hits. And had these totally wicked curveballs. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Andrew Vasquez had this slider that looked like it broke three feet. A lot of this has to do with the trajectory of the pitch because of his low arm slot and extreme position on the rubber. That is filthy. Tommy Hunter had four Ks in a two-inning appearance, thanks to his two seamers and cutters. David Robertson was outstanding with four Ks in two innings, getting the save, thanks to his cutters and knuckle curves. Cody Clemens made a relief appearance and got another K. Yep, that's his second career strikeout. His two Ks leave him now 4,670 Ks behind his dad. And he may catch him in a couple thousand years. Josh Winkowski had this 
High Velo 93 mile an hour changeup. Domingo Tapia painted this 99 mile an hour fastball. Nate Pearson brought the heat, touching 100 with his fastball. Ryan Presley got this K on a fastball down the middle. And this overlay shows you why you would take a fastball down the middle. As a hitter, you don't want to get fooled again with this slider below the zone. And that tunneling makes it tough to distinguish those two pitches. And in your head, you're thinking that Presley is going to try to put you away with a slider. And you end up taking a fastball kind of down the middle. Emmanuel Classe had this Mariano Rivera special. Yep, a high velo cutter that shatters a bat into a million pieces. Just like old Mariano used to. And my filthiest reliever of the day was Mark Leiter Jr. He has been outstanding this season with his splitter and K'd the side on splitters here. And here's a picture of Mark Leiter Jr.'s splitter grip. Before we get to my moment of zen, I was on MLB Network yesterday and I gave out my pitchers of the month for April as well as my pitches of the month. And I thought I'd share them with you. Pitching Ninja, pitchers of the month. Yeah, I, I mean, it's so tough for me to choose. But for the AL, I've got Garrett Cole, Shohei Otani, and Sonny Gray. I think letting him be himself is the key. Like, dude knows how to spin a baseball and has been just outstanding. Yeah, you certainly look at those numbers. Otani, Gray, and Cole, head of the class so far. How about in the National League? Who are your pitchers of the month? Well, I've got to go with my fellow Tar Heel, Zach Gallon, who has just been outstanding. Um, as well as Spencer Strider, who, yeah, he's just always dominant. Zach Allen is, I mean, I called him a grandmaster. He's just such a great chess player um, and just out thinks hitters, executes really well, spins the baseball, does everything you'd want a pitcher to do. Yeah, I wore the Carolina Blues specifically for you and for Zach Allen. All right, I love this. <laughs> Specific best pitches of the month. Yeah, um, to me, the one pitch that I keep playing over and over in my head is that Matt Brash slider to Ramirez. Um, it's just not fair. Look at this. I call it a Bohemian Rhapsody knuckle curve, or I think it might have been actually a slider in, in reality, but it's because Mama, he just killed a man. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, he just killed. Matt Brash, the pride of Kingston, Ontario, by the way, which is where I spent quite a many years. Uh, do you have another pitch of the month so far in April? Absolutely. Zach Gallen threw an inadvertent pitch of the month with this cut changeup that fooled everybody and nails the umpire in the mask. Um, he had no idea how he did it. Pasquantino had no idea what he was seeing. Everybody was shocked at this pitch. Um, and I think it just caught a seam and went the wrong way. Ninja back at it again with the dongs of the week. And for these dongs, we're going to start it off heading south of the border. Everyone knows about Coors Field, the high elevation causes deep, deep jacks. Well, it doesn't hold a candle to Tecate Field in Mexico City, where pitchers go to die. Ninja, there were 11 bombs in this game, four of the longest 15 of the year, including this one from Lamont Wade Jr., 479, just pulverized. Speaking of pulverizing the ball, Brennan Crawford took this one 482, which is the third longest dong of the year. Again, we're not going to dong shame him for it being in Mexico City. It's uh, 482 feet is 482 feet. Next, we're moving back to American soil, headed over to Fenway Park. This wasn't the longest oh, dong, but it's the best kind of dong, and it's a walk-off dong. For Dugo, with his third walk-off of the year, you've heard of Big Poppy. Well, here we got Small Poppy. And finally, the long dong of the week goes to Ronald Acuna Jr. Acuna. Now, the official measurement for this ball is 448 feet. I live 15 minutes from City Field. I'm there all the time. Something seemed fishy about this being 448. So I had our dong department conduct an independent investigation, and turns out my suspicions were correct. This ball was actually hit 520. And that's your dong of the week. And now, the Pitching Ninja moment of zen. This is an outstanding jinx by Boog Shambi, Chicago Cubs announcer. It's almost like the Pitching Ninja jinx right now when I pick a pitcher in a K-prop parlay. Oh, that is too soon, Ninja. For Drew Smiley, a guy that generates soft contact, the Cubs as a team have allowed the lowest hard hit rate in the big leagues. Drilled to center, Bellinger going back. Back some more, turning and looking, and that one's gone. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are three-leg parlay. We're gonna go with Young Guns today. I'm gonna take Tanner Bybee for five Ks or more, 
then take Mason Miller for 6Ks or more, and top it off with Hunter Brown for 6Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?